Hey Kevin, so here's a look at your ground strokes. Overall, you have plenty of power and you can generate a lot of spin, so that's very nice. One aspect of your ground strokes I think you should work on though is a little bit more control and consistency. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at a few shots at normal speed. Alright, so you can generate a lot of racket head speed and that's really good. Alright, plenty of power and never a bad thing. So like I said, we want to focus a little bit more on consistency when we play. So when we play in real matches, we can keep balls in and let our opponents beat themselves. You don't always have to want to rely on your power because on certain days, sometimes you just can't get the ball in. So you want to be able to beat people with consistency. So anyway, let's look a little bit about at your technique on your backhand side. All right, so look at your preparation. You know, you're shuffling to the ball. All right, <clears throat> and let's see your racket take back. So you turn your shoulders, and you're kind of running with your racket in front of you. What I'd like to see is you have your racket back ready, and then you run. Okay. So you load your back leg, right? Your weight's on here, and you're getting ready to step in, which is really nice. All right, so you take a big step and you get a lot of weight transfer. So that's good. That's where a lot of your power comes from, and that's excellent. All right, so as we start to move forward, all right, you're going to see that your racket doesn't really get to drop below the level of your wrist. What you want to do is make sure that racket head is slightly lower than your wrist so that you can get a little more spin. You can go low to high. You can get under that ball and hit it in more of an arch motion. So you have a little more safety and you can hit a little more consistency. When it's flat or when the racket is parallel, hold on, when the racket is parallel like this, when you hit the ball, yes you can hit a lot of power, but that also means you don't have a lot of margin for error. So either you hit a perfect shot and it's amazing or you miss in the net or off the back fence. But you want something that has a little more safety, that has a little more of a rainbow motion, okay? Okay, so let's work on that. All right, and as you swing, let's see your contact point. And just like I thought, you have really good contact. It's way in front of your body. Your arms are fully extended. That's where a lot of your power comes from. So that part of your swing is really nice. And as we follow through, you follow through pretty much over your shoulder, and it looks really good. So now, moving to your forehand side, you start to shuffle back. All right, you don't really split step, so you kind of shuffle, but you don't split step, so you need a split step. All right, now on your forehand, let's see your preparation. All right, so you have a short compact take back. All right, now on this particular forehand, if you look, your arm is in a really strange formation right here right and your racket as well you don't really drop the head so you need to make sure that your arm is a little further away from your body so when you contact it it's way out in front okay so the take back look weird but the contact you fixed your arm so it's way in front um, but if you look at your legs you don't really step in you're kind of standing straight up okay so you want to make sure that you step in on your forehand every time, just like on your backhand. All right, now let's go ahead and look at the follow through. All right, so on this forehand, you follow through kind of where your bicep is instead of over your shoulder. One thing I noticed on all the previous forehands, let me try to find one, your follow through on your forehand looks kind of like Nadal's. You start to whip the forehand follow through over your head instead of following through over your shoulder. Alright, so let me see if I could find an example for you. Alright, so um, this forehand right here, I want you to pay attention to the follow through. Um, first, your footwork, you weren't able to set up and transfer your weight on the wide one. So try to get there early. And since you weren't able to get there early, your follow through, you kind of whip it around your head. Alright, and long term, that'll probably be bad for your joints 
and you want to try to avoid that. Okay, so on the wide balls, try to get to the position early, so you have time to set in, uh, step in and set up. All right. So let's recap. So on your backhand, you have really good weight transfer. You just need to drop your head below your wrist. Your contact point is good on your backhand as long as your fall through. But on your forehand, you need to set up a little earlier, get your feet to step in, and make sure you always fall through over your shoulder instead of whipping it across your head, kind of like how Nadal does it. Okay? So in practice, um, just work on those things. All right, other than that, good job, Kevin.